Hello, I'm Dirk and what I have for you today is this box with a Framework laptop. It's a laptop from the company Framework. And if you now say, well, you have never heard of them, then you could be right, because they're a quite new and quite small producer of laptops. They just started business here in Europe and especially here in Germany, so I was just able to order one. These framework laptops have a very interesting concept because they are designed extremely modular. Every component should be exchangeable or repairable or upgradable or even recyclable quite easily. And at the same time they are based on quite modern hardware. Everything here is based on an Intel Core i5 or Core i7 processor of 11th generation. And they are said to have a sleek design and a good battery runtime. And as I was in need of a new business laptop anyway, I decided to give it a go and well, here it is. And now let's unbox this thing and look what's in it. Even at first glance the box reveals that this laptop is still somehow special. Distribution structures in Europe and in Germany are still heavy under construction and so the whole thing has been shipped directly from Taiwan to Hanover. And even though the VAT is actually handled by Framework and has been paid on ordering, delivery was stuck at customs in the first place. Fortunately, we could solve the issue quickly by giving the EORI number. And even with these additional steps, total delivery time from Taipei to me was only four work days. Let's have a look at the delivery information. It is also special in that it mentions lots of parts of the system at their own. This is due to the modular structure of the framework laptop. Lots of parts are sold separately from the beginning and the whole device can be disassembled and reassembled easily. Okay, so I'm now opening the box and it seems that I am unboxing it now from the bottom. These are the additional modules, the actual laptop and the power adapter. The additional modules are packaged nicely in this box. There is an SSD mass storage device and the main memory module, which is pretty neat actually. And then there are the four expansion modules. We'll look at them in a moment. There is also the power adapter. The power cable is for Germany and Europe. The laptop itself works with USB power delivery exclusively, so the whole power adapter is nothing special. You can take any USB power delivery device with at least 60 watt. But let's take the expansion ports and the power adapter apart and take a look at the real thing. Let's open the box. There is a graphics for a good mood in the inside. Then comes the laptop, a card with some stickers, a short manual and a screwdriver. And here it is, my framework laptop. With glossy display, not my favorite, but they do not offer an anti-glare alternative at the moment. A German keyboard, a mouse pad and on the back side the four expansion ports. They all have USB-C connectors and they are to be filled with different expansion modules. I have ordered two USB-C modules, one USB-A module and an HDMI module for an external monitor for this laptop. There are also other alternatives like DisplayPort or memory modules. But there are other things first. I have mass storage and main memory board separately and now I have to put them into the machine. I'd like to mention that I have ordered the do-it-yourself version of the framework laptop. You can also order it in three different pre-assembled versions with both mass storage devices already built in so that you do not have to install them yourself. But where is the fun in that? For my laptop I ordered one 32GB main memory module. As mass storage I took a 1TB SSD, a device which is also pretty small these days. Now it's time to use that special accessory for this laptop, the screwdriver. I have to open the laptop to install the memory devices. The manual says this is pretty simple. There are five small screws 
at the bottom and as the manual mentions these screws are mounted in a special way so that they cannot be unscrewed completely. That of course has the advantage that they cannot get lost. The fifth screw at the bottom left is special as it does not unscrew as much as the other ones. When it cracks it's already enough, then the laptop can be opened. The top is also held magnetically and I have to take care that the cable to the mouse pad and the keyboard is not damaged while opening. Now we can see how well this laptop is designed when it comes to service and parts replacement. Each part has its QR code which leads directly to a web page with description and further information for that part. Everything is labeled and held with screws and therefore extremely easy to exchange even the battery here at the bottom. The computer is really designed for easy maintenance and sustainability. Now we have to install the missing parts. You see their places, memory and storage. There is another screw, this time completely removable, at the storage place. Now I can simply insert the mass storage and fixate it with said screw. That's it. Now the same procedure with the main memory. You see there is a channel 0 and a channel 1 and if you only have one module as I have you should install it in channel 0. Crack! There it is in place. And that was all to do. I just reinstall the case now and fasten the screws at the bottom. Now for the expansion ports. For those I have my four modules. Let's open the boxes. This is a USB-C module and now I can decide where to install it. And the USB-A module and the other USB-C module and finally the HDMI module for the external monitor. At my desktop this monitor sits on the left side of the laptop so that I should install the port also on the left side. One crack and it's in. One of the USB-C modules comes next to it. On the other side I put the USB-A module and the other USB-C module. It is very simple to change the configuration. Just press the button between the slots and pull the module to replace it with another one or swap module positions. All four expansion ports are equal. This finishes the assembly of the computer and I can plug in the power adapter. It just goes into one of the USB-C ports. Now let's open the system and turn it on. Ok, nothing happens so far. And finally a message appears. The manual mentioned that the first boot will take some time and now the only thing we see is a message saying that the system cannot boot as there is no operating system on the SSD. It would be strange if there was one, I just installed the device the way it came out of the factory. Time to change this and install an operating system. This memory stick contains the current beta version of Ubuntu 22.04. I put it into the USB-A slot of the laptop and turn it on. You can see how glare the display actually is. I hope this will not disturb my work later. The Ubuntu boot menu from the stick appears. We can just go with the default boot alternative. All in all, this looks quite promising. And we have booted into Ubuntu. I decided for Ubuntu as it is one of the widest spread distributions available and normally quite uncomplicated. I do perform now an installation onto the SSD. And I switch to German user interface, bear with me on that. The installation immediately offers my local Wi-Fi network. I connect to it but there is no visual feedback whether this connection succeeds or not. We'll have to see later. 
for the whole installation process, we stick with the default selections in the dialogs and we use the whole disk as this is the most simplest way and yes, I know what I'm doing, really. Now the installation starts and the laptop is able to download the updated package versions, so our network connection actually really works. And finally, after 9 minutes and 17 seconds, the installation is finished. I unplug the USB stick and reboot the computer. We see the installation is finished, the system boots successfully, I start the browser, and I am in the internet. And this was the first installation of my framework laptop. I think this is a well-structured process and you saw it in the video. Of course, this video is edited a bit, but after all, it was more or less live and I didn't practice in advance and I came quite smoothly through it. Mm, I like the hardware. Um, the processor is as fast as one would expect, the screen is nice and, especially important for me, the keyboard is also very nice. But the thing that I think most impressed me here was the installation of Ubuntu 22.04 that you just saw. I mean, this was from a completely empty disk to a fully functional workstation with graphical interface, with locked in user and with fast Wi-Fi and that in about 10 minutes. This was not the first time in my life that I installed Linux, but this was definitely one of the smoother experiences. One says there is never a second chance for a first impression. Well, for me, the framework laptop does not need such a second chance, because this first impression was, well, impressive. And I don't know whether you saw that in the videos, but apart from the two memory modules, all parts of the packaging are out of paper. One of the key concepts of the framework laptop is sustainability and that is also valid for this detail of the whole product. And so we come to the end of this video. If you have any questions or remarks, just write them down, for example, here in the comments. See you next time and thanks for watching. This um, was um, something that I will now start again.